Welcome to One-on-One on God 101. I'm your host, Julie Chen Moonvez. Today's guest is America's favorite house guest from Big Brother 15, Alyssa Slater. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Julie. It's been, what, 10 years since <laughs> we spoke? So we have a lot of catching up to do. A lot. But first, but first God. Absolutely. Did you grow up? having faith and God in your life and knowing the Lord? Absolutely. My parents both work with devout Catholics and they actually met at a Catholic Bible study. So they had the Catholic upbringing, but when Rachel and I were young, they decided to um, move into a non-denominational church so they could be just a little bit freer with the way that they worship and their relationship with Christ. So Rachel and I both grew up in a very biblically based home, and I'm so grateful for that because I feel my spiritual connection to Christ and Jesus is definitely what keeps me grounded and definitely the number one priority in my life, even though sometimes, (laughs) sometimes you may not know, and sometimes I get a little, a little off track, but ultimately I feel like he is my firm foundation and my grounding. And I know that I can always rely upon Christ. And um, I, I just am so thankful for that and just for having that upbringing. Now, uh, the Rachel that you're referring to is, of course, your sister who played in Big Brother 12 and 13 and won Big Brother 13. Um, You're both mothers now, married and have kids. Uh, How old are your kids now? I have a 17-year-old and a 6-year-old. So very, very um, far apart, but I love it because I feel like also God knew what he was doing. I I absolutely was made to be a mom like every day. I just look at my children and I'm like, thank you, Jesus, for my beautiful children. Like this is the greatest gift to be a mom. And I just, I literally love it. Like I love being a mom. And um, I, I think that God knew that I would have never been happy if I was not a mom at a young age, because I really don't, I really feel like my children, I was just made to be a mom. And now I even have baby fever again. And I'm so happy that my older son is like, you know, not soon because he has to go to college and <laughs> in a couple of years, but I'm like, well, then I'll be able to get babies through him also. So I'll, <laughs> I'll be able to continually have babies. <laughs> You are hilarious. Does he know that's what you're thinking? Never mind. I seriously told him, I'm like, I'm sorry, Riley, but if you ever, like, please bring, like, number one question to ask a girl is how many children she wants. I'm like, because we're such, we're so maternal. I feel like the Rileys in general, and I never got to have a girl. And that's something I feel like I am missing. So I'm counting on Riley to bring me that girl and to bring me a girl baby into the family. So he knows, he knows he's, he's on duty, but not, not, he can wait until he's like 40. (laughs) You you say you're counting on Riley, but you're really counting on the Lord to bless you with your granddaughter that you so want in your heart. And yes. only God knows, and we'll see. Yes, absolutely. Now, does does he? Did you ever send uh, when Riley was younger? Did you send him to Christian camp? Does he know the Lord? Because people have to make that decision on their own if they want to follow Christ. I, you know. Yes, absolutely. He goes to Catholic school now and he's always gone to Christian school. So that was really important to me because I did not go to a Christian school, but my sister did. And I feel like I wanted my children to always go to a Christian school because I wanted them to have that foundation and be surrounded by Christ because it isn't only in the home. I think the home is the most important place that you connect to Christ. But I wanted him to be around friends that have that foundation also um, 
because especially now, now our world is so crazy. And I just feel like, you know, people are so lost. They're so focused on social media and about everything's just fake. And the one thing that is not fake is, is Christ. Like he is the opposite of fake. He is so real. He is so loving. And, um, I want my son to be a godly man and be a godly husband and be able to continuous continue. Uh, I mean, I, my dad is one of the, like the godliest man. And I hope that my son speaks Christ into his family and his leader. So well, important men. Oh yes. The studies have shown if um, a man gives his life to Christ more often than not, so does the whole family. Okay. And a lot of time when you go into church, you see the wives there, the women there, and the husbands are like, oh, I'll drop you off or they don't necessarily want to go. So I just heard that statistic like seven days ago. So I had to share it with you. Um, when, when you were playing Big Brother, how often were you talking to God and what were you saying to him? Oh gosh, like 24 seven, honestly. And I feel like that was one of the most connected times I've been to Christ because everything is so, you have nothing, you have nothing, but you know, and I didn't really have a lot of close friends in the house and I'm a very people person and I am I mean, my mom, my sister, and I, we are so close, and I love my girls, and I am such a, um, just a connected person that being secluded made me really depend on my faith, and so I just, the overwhelming presence of Christ while I was in the house is actually insane. I feel like I just felt him like in my intuition, just knowing, you know, certain things like if I was in a bad situation, I felt like I I had a he always gave me wisdom with um the people that I made friendships with and I felt very confident in my in the people that I did connect with which basically was Helen and Candace, but I feel like they were a true blessing in that house because I just, they were solid. They were solid women. And um, even though you're playing a game and everything is fierce, it just was nice to be able to have somewhat of that sense of peace. Now, to remind people, um, Big Brother 15, the season you were on, it was Andy who won. Um, and Helen, Helen Kim, we did see you connect with Helen and Candace. Are you still in touch with them today? So I talk to Helen occasionally and Candace occasionally also. When I was in California, probably like a year and a half ago, I got to meet her son and we went out. So that was really nice. We went dress shopping. She helped me pick out this beautiful dress. So that was awesome. I don't talk to them as frequently as I would love to, but um, Helen is just honestly a super mom. She has, I believe, four children and and she works and she's just is such a powerhouse. So she's very busy. I'm very busy, but um, yeah, I love them. Um, so after you got out of the big brother house, after you had a lot of quiet time to just be still and talk to God, did your prayer life change as a result of you really having this intense alone time with the Lord while in the big brother house? I feel I'm trying I'm trying to think because I've had so many times where I'm like I feel like a lot of Christians just where you're in your Bible, you're doing Bible studies, you're doing prayer time. And I feel like before I went on Big Brother, I was just that person. I um was constantly doing um Bible studies every morning. I did just like a prayer app where I went through and um read scripture and then just like spent about 30 minutes just like with my thoughts to Christ and I actually journaled. And um, it's so, it is amazing just to look back at my notes. Like I feel like every, everything that's ever been on my heart, anything that I've ever given to Christ, he's just fulfilled um, 360 and greater. And um, I don't know. I don't, you know what? I moved to Canada and um, Canada is not as um, powerhouse Christians as, 
North Carolina, where I'm from. And so I feel like a lot of my disconnect had was because I had such a Christian and faith-filled group of friends in North Carolina and my whole life, like all of my friends were Christian. We all went to Elevation together. I, I went, I don't know if you know Stephen Burdick, but Elevation, I went to his church when he was in a high school, like back at Pro Providence High, before he was Stephen Furtick, before he had the streaming services. My friends and I, when I was 18, went to his church. So when I came to Canada, it was, I feel like that's where I kind of got off of my, um, I, I wasn't as connected. And that's how important community is. Well, I do have to say one of the um, silver linings of, um, God hitting the pause button on the world in March of 2020 with the pandemic was um, a lot of services now are available virtually. So if you're still in Canada now, you could probably connect with the word through watching through any church that you choose, you know, whether it's your former church when you were in North Carolina or what have you. Um, do you, have you found, are you in Canada now? Well, I'm back and forth. I actually was in North Carolina the past two years, and um, I'm in Canada right now because my son is playing basketball. He played for Team SAS, which is um, – they he actually played in, like, the Canadian Olympics. So this summer, it was really cool. So he was here playing for the provincial team here. Um, he, play, he played Canada games. It was so special. So um, I'm here for the rest of the school year, and then I'll be back in North Carolina. So I'm excited oh. for that. I'm a Carolina girl <laughs> through and through. I love, I love North Carolina. So, but yes, I do watch Elevation and we, we have a church here also. That's great. It's just, I, people are very reserved here. It's not as, um, not as loud <laughs> as, as us Americans. I yes. went to Canada for the first time just a couple of months ago and I went to the local uh, community church there. So I hear you. And it was a lesson for me to see like, oh, there's so many different uh, ways to worship. And all right, I'm going to yeah. be a little bit more reserved right now. But so, yeah. <laughs> now, as we good night this episode, would you please share with um, everyone listening right now, what is on your heart uh, currently? Like who and what are you praying for these days? I think what is on my heart is 1 Corinthians 13, 18 through 3. Love never ends. And love will never pass away. Um, the greatest of these are love. But I, I think it's so interesting just how God reinforces to love each other in the Bible. And I feel like that's what he's put on my heart. Like I am not here to judge anyone because God knows all of our sin is equal. And I think that over and over with convictions, I have felt just to love people. And that's what I want for my family. And I, I just want to love people. I think that I, none of us know it's kind of like other than the Bible, the one thing that we have that is the foundation that we know is true. We don't know everything else is telephone. So God's probably up looking at us. Like you guys got this wrong a lot, right? Like imagine how many things he thinks we're just like, Oh, what a mess we are. So I just feel like very strongly. I am just, to love people, like no matter what, love people. And it's hard, but that's my main, my main focus is just to be consistent. Well, Alyssa, you know, you are speaking to my heart right now because that's why I like to end every episode of Big Brother, love one another. Yes, it's, absolutely. It, just try. Try. Um, Alyssa from BB15, thank you so much. God, may God continue to bless you and may you continue to walk in his light and have him shine and smile upon you. Truly, thank you, Alyssa. Thanks so much, Julie.